you're a controls guy and may not be familiar with SNMP, you may be asking yourself, what exactly is SNMP? We'll cover that and some other basic concepts related to SNMP before we move on. The acronym SNMP stands for Simple Network Management Protocol. As an industry standard, SNMP provides a uniform way to mine valuable health and status information from your network infrastructure devices, such as routers, switches, UPS systems, firewalls, generators, and much more, including an ever-growing number of control devices. Devices that support the SNMP protocol are typically known as managed devices in the IT world. If you buy a managed switch, you can be pretty sure it will support SNMP. There are three best basic parts to understand with SNMP, and as a provider of automation software, we like to try to equate the IT stuff to controls. The first thing to understand is the NMS, or Network Management System. In the IT world, it's the NMS. In the controls world, you can equate that to your HMI or a master in a control system. You also have an SNMP agent, which is the equivalent of a PLC, field device, or other slave device on the control side. You also have what is known as an MIB, or Management Information Base. What the MIB is, is an informational file that tells the server where the data is and how to read it. You can equate this to a tag list in your HMI, SCADA, or OPC server. In the past, the control network and the business network were segregated. The business network had their own network monitoring tools, and the control network could provide process data to the HMI or SCADA, but they couldn't talk to each other. Then Ethernet began to gain popularity on the plant floor, making this easier or more necessary. IT began seeing the need to monitor Ethernet devices on the plant floor and started using their NMS to monitor SNMP-enabled devices. However, there are still many non-Ethernet or Ethernet control devices without SNMP, leaving the business network with only a partial view of the control network and no way to access process data. The health of the control network was available to IT and the business network, but there was no way to monitor that in the plant without another expensive NMS package. To begin bridging the gap, products like the Top Server SNMP suite were introduced. Adding the SNMP driver to a Top Server installation using other drivers to obtain process data from PLCs allowed the plant to have a full view of the control network. It achieves this by providing both the process data from the PLC drivers and network device status through the SNMP driver to the HMI or SCADA. However, this full view was still unavailable to the business network or IT without implementing your HMI or SCADA on the business side as well. This is where the SNMP agent comes into play. It can take data from any of the existing top server drivers and provide that process data as SNMP data to the network management system on the business or IT network. Using the SNMP driver in addition to the SNMP agent, you can also make top server act as an aggregator of SNMP data for the network management system, reducing traffic between the business and control networks. So let's take a look at a quick demonstration of how the SNMP agent can provide this process data to the network management system. I'll share out a couple of applications here that we'll need. Okay, first you'll see here the top server. When you first open it, it has the device tabs, the devices tab in focus, and you'll see the driver and device tree. We're simulating a generator using an automation direct PLC measuring power in kilowatts and the running state of the generator. The SNMP agent shows up as a plug-in tab at the bottom of the tree. You scroll through the plug-in tabs at the bottom of the tree until you see the SNMP Agent tab. Click here on this tab, 
and now on the tree you'll see an unconfigured SNMP agent. You click the link in the tree to configure the agent. Here you'll see a number of fields. All the fields you see are optional other than the object ID and the MIB sub identifier. You can choose to enable and disable in the checkbox at the bottom. All of these fields will be turned into SNMP agent objects or tags once you define those. For our description, for our simulation, we'll name it SCADA, PC, Generator, PLC for the description. I will be the contact. The name of the agent will be SCADA PC PLC Gen 1, which gives us a view of where the agent is or what the agent might be um, located. And then location is here at the SWTV offices. You click Next to continue. If you have multiple NICs or network cards in the PC, then you can choose which one to use here. You can also choose what port to use for SNMP communications. It's unlikely that it will be anything other than the default of 161. If you have only one NIC, then you can leave the default network adapter selected rather than choosing a NIC in that drop-down box at the top here. Click Next to continue. You can now choose what SNMP version, version your agent will use, either version 1, version 2C, or both. It's best practice to leave the default of supporting both version 1 and 2C, depending on the age of your network management systems in the uh, IT network. You can also define custom community names. You can think of communities like security groups. Also, you can set what IP address you will accept SNMP requests from or accept from all. For security purposes, if you only have one NMS, it is best practice to only accept from that IP address. For our demonstration, I'm going to accept packets from all hosts. Click Finish to, to finish this. And now you'll see the general system tags in the right pane. These values are based on the information you entered in the first screen. Now we will add the items that we want to make their values, values available to the NMS via SNMP. You add a group by clicking the link under item mappings. You can name the group anything you wish, but if you have multiple PLCs or devices, you may make the name equivalent to the device name you defined. In this case, we will name our group Gen 1. You can also add a description if you like. Uh, we'll skip that for purposes of our demonstration. And you also give it an MIB sub identifier. Now we'll add items to our group. You right click on the group. Here you see the ability to add either a new single item or you can add multiple items at one time by using the add multiple item mappings. We'll, we'll do multiple and add both of our items from our generator at one time. You browse the tree from your device driver to your, to your device, and then you can select both of your, or all of your tags by holding the control key while clicking on the tags. Click Apply. And now you see both of the tags in the right hand window available for SNMP NMS to access from the top server. <clears throat> we'll now add a trap to uh, send traps to the NMS. A trap is simply an event sent as an unsolicited message or report by exception to the NMS. You add a group here as well by clicking the link under Traps. Once again, you give it a name and a description, if you so choose, and the MIB identifier, and click Next. Now you must define the IP address you will be sending the traps to 
which will be the IP or IPs of any NMS PCs. You must also define the port, but like the with, NN, with SNMP messages, you will probably use the default of 162. Traps like SNMP polling need a community name and a version defined as well as the network adapter to use on the PC. Once you've made your selections, you click the Add button and then Finish. So I'll add the IP address of our NMS here. We'll leave the community at public. We'll make this an SNMP version 2C and leave our network default adapter at default. Click the Add button and now you see it as a trap destination. Click Finish and then we'll need to add the trap tag. You right click, add new trap, give it a name which we'll call running state because we want the trap to be sent should um, the generator stop running. You can give it a description. You'll see it's SNMP object identifier which is like the tag address or PLC address in a PLC, the sub identifier or specific trap type, and then a version 2 object identifier for version 2C. Click next. You select the server item from any other PLC drivers or um, data source drivers you're using in the top server. Once again, we'll select the running state and apply. You see this tag in the item field now. You set an update rate and you can choose milliseconds, seconds, minutes, hours, or up to days. You can set a dead band, but since this is a Boolean on or off, there's no dead band that we need to set here. Then you'll set a trigger to trigger the, a trigger state to trigger the um, trap to fire. This can be an absolute value or a server item. Then you can choose the operator. In this case, we want to send a trigger if the source item is equal to zero. In, in the comparison, you can see that you can set the source greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, equal to or not equal to the threshold that we're setting. So we want ours our, thresh, our source to equal the threshold of zero. You click finish and now you see your trap in the window as well that's available to be sent to your NMS. <coughs> you can also export the MIB file that we talked about earlier that allows you to import it into your NMS to give it access to the server as an SMP agent. You simply right click on SNMP agent and export MIB file. You can choose whether you want to include the item mappings, traps, or both, and the module name that you wish for this to show up as and what SNMP version it's using. Click the export MIB button, choose your location to save it, and save. As you can see, we've already saved this. We'll do it again. and your MIB is exported now and available for import into the NMS. Now we're going to switch over to the remote desktop with our NMS. You'll see your channel, device, and the SMP agent where we've imported the MIB. We'll launch the OPC Quick Client, which is a built-in test client to show the process data being passed as SMP data. When you launch the Quick Client, you'll see a tree view, much like you do in the Pop Server configuration. You'll highlight your channel.device.tag group, showing all of the data for the that's being passed as SNMP data. Here you see your kilowatt and your running state. Now, we'll go look at the traps as well. When everything
everything's working as expected and there have been no traps received, in the quick client at least, you'll see all zeros are null values that indicates there have been no traps received. So we'll turn our simulated generator off to create a trap. Now you see the running state value change to one, which indicates we received a trap. You will also see the timestamp of the event, the object identifier or tag address of the trap, the generic trap type and specific trap type, which I don't have information on right now in front of me, but your NMS will probably have that information. You'll also see the sysuptime SNMP tag, which tells the system uptime in milliseconds. 